bad that they cannot hear my voice if I stand up. So I should use my mic. So here it is. Hi. Good. Can you hear me at the back? Yes. Cool. And uh, okay, I will move on to the third lesson. Okay, which is the edge up. So, what is the edge out? Remember the definition of data, data journalism. Empirical social science with a deadline. The deadline is really important. Okay? <laughs> so, I need to move very fast. Okay? My wife is smiling because he. She, <laughs> sorry, she, she know how I work like 24 hours a day on those stories. But anyway, uh, so the agile, what is the meaning of the agile? So I, I have to tell you this by election is a news in itself. So about a month ago, I am already planning for this story. So, I use another story as a prototype, okay? Which is this one. No, not this one. This one. Uh, the title is Meaning Using Machine Learning to Predict the Hong Kong Election. So, about, uh, about a month ago, I uh, create this story first because I want to use, try to use the election data to predict the, to predict the outcome. Actually, it's not predict, it's like we should start to analyze the results of the, uh, of the Hong Kong election by matching the data from the census and uh, data from the uh, from the election. So, for example, this uh, analysis find out there are some factors from the census which is related to the election outcome. So, I have already have this story in my head. Actually, meaning that I have the code ready before the by election. A month ago, so actually I, I used this one to prepare for the for the, for the actual stories, which is the by election. So a month ago, I already this is the timeline of the thing happened during the during the uh, by election. Okay, a month ago, I already created the software for doing the analysis on this story, okay? And uh, the election is on Sunday, okay? And I suppose to turn in this assignment by Saturday, because this will be published on the Sunday evening part, okay? But from what I know, the uh, the government will not release the data about the election immediately. So, um, but there is a catch here. So, by that time, there is a new online media outlet, which is called the HKO One. <laughs> Actually, uh, any, anyone from HK one <laughs> <laughs> Okay, some of them, okay. Uh, Louisiana. <laughs> I'm exam Louisiana. The HK01 actually have some very good reporters. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Why I say so? Because they are the first team to get the entire data um, about each individual voting station, how each individual voting station get how many votes in their hand, and they put it online on Monday. But call me paranoid, I don't trust all the data they provide. And I want to I want to use the government data. But in Monday I don't have the official government data. So I use the data from the HK01 for total typing. I'm not using that data for 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 uh, the final product, but I will use their data as uh, to test how how the, the visualization works and and things like that. There's a problem. Uh, sorry, once again for the folks from Channel One. Things like that. <laughs> they actually have all the data, but their analysis is not so once again for the folks. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. And if you if you read, they, they, they actually have the data for, for weeks or so, but they produce some analysis, but to me, it's more for weeks or so. Sorry to say that, but they produce too. some yeah, it's now analysis. It's, it's, it's very good. Okay. But, but, <laughs> but by that time, it's not that good. Uh, they have the data, but they don't know how to how to use the data, but I found a way to use their data to as a prototype, and um, and actually I, I I say I don't trust them, but I use their data as a prototype, but I have 80% uh, faith about the accuracy of their data, so <laughs> I use their data to do prototyping and also try to write something, and then uh, by first day, uh, the main power reporter report that uh, repeatedly push the government to release the data. And uh, by the night of first day, they, they, the, the government actually released the data. So I download the data, pop it into my code, and then try to confirm that all things work well. And then in Friday, I work all day to write, to finalize the story. And then in in Saturday, I have the I, I, I turn in the report, and then in Sunday it got released. Okay. Why I say it's agile, okay? Because you need to you need to have the software available even before the data is available. Okay. Why I say so? Because there is another team. Sorry, I. I, I think I criticize a lot of people in this talk. <laughs> There's another team in CUHK, uh, which is led by uh, Ivan Choi. Choi. Ivan Choi. Choi Zika. Okay. They are also very interested in the analysis of the, uh, of the election outcomes and things like that. They have a team, okay? They have a big team of research assistants, but I have one person. And um, I think what his team do is to wait until first day and then ask, their, ask his uh, research assistant to do the uh, analysis around the clock and then try to submit a, a, an article to Ming Pao. And the difference between being agile and not agile is something like that. I, I will show you the results. <laughs> so, this is a Google result of searching for the title, the King which is the title of my article. And by coincidence, this is also the, uh, the title of, uh, of the story. <laughs> From Ivan Choi. 
But can you see the difference in the date? I'm faster than him for one day. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, okay, again, his story sucks. <laughs> so, be agile. Meaning, even you don't have the data at hand, try to use, mock some data or using some fake data to test your software first. And then when you have the data at hand, pop it in and then you will have the stories. Be agile. And, uh, okay, the fourth one is what? Okay. Use interpretable methods. Interpretive, interpretive methods. So, interpretable. is better than sophisticated methods. Okay, but there is some exception, but I will tell you why. Um, Sometimes I can use some very sophisticated methods. For example, for this one, I try to analyze the uh, online media <coughs> using machine learning. It basically meaning uh, the topics model. I try to find out the topics of the article from the uh, Hong Kong online media and then um, try to find out the difference uh, between those online media. The methodology is actually quite sophisticated, and if I try to explain it, I cannot explain it to my mother, for example, because it's so sophisticated. But this story works. People like it. The problem because this story is not very controversial, okay? But there is a, there is something that is very dangerous. Uh, I use a. I use a very sophisticated method, and um, it gives me some trouble. But uh, I will show you which one. Which is okay. I have a history of analyzing the uh, election outcome. Okay, I mean to predict the election. Okay, this is back in ten years ago. Okay, which is the election. It is also a by election between Anton Chan and Regina Yu. Okay, do you remember that one? <laughs> and um, in that election, I already published something. It's called, this maybe called total, total data journalism. Okay, and uh, what I do is trying to combine all the surveys from the uh, Hong Kong U Park, and also other surveys uh, from, from other university and also maybe from SCMP, try to combine them together and uh, try to study the difference between the, the, the ratings of uh, Anson Chan and Regina Yu. And uh, even before the election, I know that Anson Chan will win. And, um, Okay, maybe you, you by that time you know you, you you will make the same prediction, but my prediction is extremely accurate. I mean, what is the meaning of extremely accurate? For example, the the final election outcome, the difference between uh, Anson Chen and Regina Yu is eleven point nine five percent. Okay. My prediction is 11.8. So it is 0.1% discrepancy. <laughs> so this method works at that time and, uh, is, and, and also very accurate. And, um, and then I use the same method. <laughs> <laughs> Plus something else, which is called a Monte Carlo stimulation, try to predict the outcome of World Cup. But 
it works sometimes, but it didn't work sometimes. But, <laughs> but still, it can predict uh, who, who is the winners. And um, I actually using these two methods, combining these two methods for the election prediction, okay, which is this one. I tried to predict the election last year using the uh, method that I have shown you, but with a little bit uh, improvement, which is we know that the uh, Hong Kong U Park, you can say it's biased, but it's, it cannot give a very reliable, uh, reliable estimate of the supported rating for the pro-Beijing groups. So I try to adjust it, adjust the results between the actual polls in the previous election and the results from the Hong Kong group talk and then using machine learning to adjust it. And then uh, I also try to use the uh, computer simulation, which is the Monte Carlo simulation that I use in the World Cup prediction <laughs> and try to predict uh, the, the outcome of the uh, of the 2012 election. Um, the first piece is not very popular, actually. And then I try to update it a few weeks later. But this one is really popular. You can see that a lot of people like it. <laughs> and it's actually uh, a show who is who, who have the biggest chance of winning and things like that. Sure. Yeah, and and I suggest them to use the uh, 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 horse racing journalism kind of uh, reporting. How how they report it? Um, there's a catch here in the uh, Hong Kong Island prediction. So these are the winners. I predict they will be winning. They, they, they will win the election. This one is very difficult to see, but I can tell you, she is Sit Ho. Ho Sao La. And um, and then this one is Luo Hu Chong. <laughs> And um, there is some very, I would say, unfortunate event after I published this one, which is <laughs> the Sit Ho campaign tried to use this story to, how to say, go up in English. <laughs> Yeah, and said, oh, all the crime is in, in a danger, and uh, if you give me more support, then I, I will win. So I will, I will move to here. Okay. This move make the Luo uh, Bunchong campaign very angry. Okay. I have some friends in that campaign, and uh, they sent me a message saying, I'm harming their campaign. Then I say, oh, it's data. It's nothing about me. <laughs> and, um, but uh, I, my, 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 my point is clear is that I don't like Sid Ho using this story as her campaign, <laughs> actually. But anyway, she used it. She used it. Uh, and by that time, I released the daily update of the result of that uh, of that prediction every day, and um, and then there is a problem. So, problem is uh, there is a mathematics PhD. I, I I kind of know him. Is it a mean tweet? 
Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's very mean. Uh, but um, but he has his point because he is a uh, mathematics PhD, and uh, he 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 explored the uh, weakness in that story, which is because of the uh, opacity of the methods. For example, he claimed that. Say, he say that uh, the machine learning uh, machine learning model to adjust the difference between the Hong Kong UPOP and the and, and the uh, actual election outcome is uh, mysterious. And also, he said that uh, the simulation is not better. This model is not better than an assignment from the student in terms of uh, integrity and innovation. Okay, I accept that actually because I just use it for a World Cup prediction. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, I. Because of uh, his criticism, I pose a very uh, humble apologies, <laughs> and um, and I say that I, I I I will remove the part about the simulations uh, from my from my daily uh, prediction. So if you look at the this one, you can see that the uh, daily prediction result is no longer there. But actually, <laughs> I can enter a cheat code, which is up, up, down, down. <laughs> up, up, down, down, left, y, left, y, z, a, b, a. <laughs> it will give me the uh, election result, which is based on the simulation. Because I want to read that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, based on the final prediction, my prediction model has uh, 85 percent accuracy. I cannot take uh, some of the, for example, in the uh, in the in the Hong Kong Island result, I cannot correctly predict uh, Leighton Law will win because Wang uh, Gay. Is Dai I don't know how to say it. But uh, for, for some of the district, it's very accurate. For example, in the uh, in Kowloon East, it's very accurate. So use some interpretable method, it will save you. And uh, what next? Is to be creative. Okay, after the election, last year election, and after the publication of my analysis on the by election, suddenly everyone know how to do the analysis of the election results. How to <laughs> how to use the uh, how to use the data from the government to to create some stories. Even Oriental Daily <laughs> doing it. So, if they do it, it's a, it's a warning, meaning that I should not do it anymore. <laughs> so, I need to be creative, and I, will, I don't want to repeat what I have done in the by election, which is uh, putting the maps and study the relationship between the, uh, the census and the election results. So, uh, but I still need to publish something because the, the editor want me to write something and also I need to pay my bill. So uh, I write something for them 
uh, using some very creative methods, which is not something that people will expect. Okay. Uh, in this story, it's not statistics, actually. This story is computer science. And uh, I tried to do a, do a simulation of what if some of the voting station vanish? <laughs> and uh, we will change the results of the election. And um, how many uh, voting results? The voting station need to be vanished to change the, uh, the, 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 the outcome of the election. Uh, for example, in this case, which is uh, Yong Ho Yang, what is the name of Yong Ho? Yunus. Yunus. Okay. In, his, in her case, if there's only two election station vanish, it will be gone. <laughs> okay. Uh, and but uh, for some of the candidates, for some of the winners like uh, Regina Yip and uh, Lao Xiu Lai and uh, Eddie Chu and Evan Young, even you remove all the <laughs> all the uh, station, they will still win. <laughs> <laughs> so how to do that? Okay, you cannot use statistics. For this one, I use a computer science concept called a greedy algorithm. Do you know if there, do anyone know what is greedy algorithm? Optimize for the optimize for the uh, local optimum as an approximation of the goal optimum. So I use that concept, and somehow it works. <laughs> And uh, by that time, people like this story. So, be creative. Uh, don't repeat yourself. And uh, don't try to imitate the other. And uh, the sixth lesson, which is, again, from the soft uh, lessons, I will move back to some very technical uh, lessons, which is our part from using the grammar of graphics. You should integrate your uh, grammar of graphics workflow with tidyverse. Okay. Tidyverse is my sixth lesson. What is tidyverse? So I will show you what is tidyverse by giving you a very quick introduction of tidyverse. So suppose I have a data called euro. Okay, I have an urge to call it oil, but it's euro. Um, and then there is a package called the uh, tidyverse. So, in the tidyverse, there is a there is a sub package which is called a D prime. Okay. I think that the author of D prime should get a, a Nobel Prize for peace, <laughs> um, because it improves the humanity. <laughs> so. Um, and uh, by the way, the author of D prior is the uh, head director, which is the same author as the uh, GG part. So uh, I will look at the first few rows of the uh, Euro data set. And um, can anyone guess what it is by looking at some of the some of you may know, but uh, so can you guess what it is by looking at the names and the columns and things like that? Soccer games. Soccer games, very close. Good prediction. Uh, 
Do you ever know what is Bundesliga? German. Uh, German. German soccer. Yeah, the German, German soccer league. Actually, this is the data of, uh, of uh, uh, soccer players. Or uh, in UK, they call it footballers. Fish, 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 which is the German. And, uh, but this is not a real data set. This is the data from the uh, winning lab. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so we give the uh, names of uh, the players, the league they play, the teams, and also the position, and also their age, nationality, and uh, the uh, height and weight, and also some first. I will say subjective numbers, <laughs> which is how well they do attack and how well they do uh, defense and uh, their stamina as a numbers. So it's a video game, so they need their numbers. So remember the GG part. Okay, I want to know the relationship between the age of the uh, soccer player and their stamina. So if I try to do that, it will give me nothing. Why? Then look at the code again. No data point. No geometry. Remember that? Geometry. There's no geometry. <coughs> And uh, I need to add a geometry with a G on point, so that it will give me a chart like this. Okay, again, use your journalistic sense. What you can find from this chart the relationship between the age and the stamina. Can you see a trend? <coughs> Yeah, around 27. Yeah, there seems to be a peak there, right? Yeah. And uh, what else? What is the salient feature in this in this graph? A gap. There's a gap, right? There's a big gap here. Okay. So, why? The goalkeeper, okay, cool. And there's a reasonable prediction. And uh, what else? There's one final, one final uh, features in this graph. The outliers. The outliers. The stamina is zero. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a manager. Actually, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an error. <laughs> so, if we try to plot it uh, by the positions, you can see that all the dots yeah, is in red, uh, in the bottom side of the gaps, and all of them are goalkeepers. And uh, the whole liars, the bad people, is actually a defender. So, and um, okay, back to tidyverse, right? And um, what is tidyverse? Tidyverse is for data manipulation. And um, for data manipulation, actually, it's only of five tasks. Believe, or, believe it or not, it's only five tasks. So if you can combine all these five tasks, you can actually do all the data manipulation in the world. So let me show you the, the, the five tasks. And uh, the first task is called select, which is uh, select the column you want. For example, I have the Euro data set and I just want to extract the names and the uh, lead. So 
I will just have the names and the lead, just extract the columns, okay? And then uh, filter is to select the rows, okay? Select is for selecting columns, and filter is for selecting rows. So, if I want to uh, filter all the uh, player with the stamina less than 10, we should be able to look at dead, dead people because his stamina is less than is equal to zero. So that one is Raul Rogers. Does anyone know who is Raul Rogers? No, okay. But it's from the uh, La Liga, okay, which is from uh, Spanish. And um, we can also combine the, uh, the, 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 the verbs or the jobs together so that they work together and do what you want. For example, I can filter all the uh, players with the uh, stamina larger, higher than 95, and then select their names, position, and their stamina. So, One, for example, I will only get two. Their, their stamina is extraordinarily high. Do you ever know these players? I don't know. So uh, the next one is called arrange. Arrange is for sorting, sorting the data by columns. Believe it or not, people like this. For example, if you sort uh, which Facebook page is more influential, things like that, people like this kind of story. So you need to use a range a lot to generate that kind of stories. And uh, in this case, I want to arrange the stamina by, uh, as, uh, uh, by some orders, by the orders of their stamina, and then select their name, position, and stamina. So, if I do that, uh, we'll get, uh, okay, now it's in the ascending order. So, we start from zero and then uh, 57 and things like that. And all of them are goalkeeper. But uh, now we want to know who are the uh, players with the highest stamina and rank it down. So, what we can do is just change something which is the uh, adjust the arrange with uh, descending and into here so that it will rank it from the top and uh, anyone know who he is? Oh, yeah. He's retired. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he has very high stamina. Yeah. Why most of these Yeah, Bastion Swan Saiga. And uh, we can also sort it by multi columns rather than just the stamina. For example, I, we can sort it by the stamina first and then by their position. So uh, we can do the same thing, which is actually for, for those of you who know SQL, we actually uh, it's very similar to SQL. And then the fourth task is mutate. Mutate is for creating new columns. Um, for example, we want to uh, convert the height from cm to meters. So uh, I can do that, and you can see that it, the new columns is created, but. Uh, we can select that, select the names and also the heights in M. So now we have a new column which is created by the mutate, and then now we select them to look at it. 
and then we can even do some very sophisticated uh, calculation, for example, like calculate the BMI. For example, these are the BMI of the payers. And uh, we may also want to arrange the player by, the, uh, by their BMI. For example, we know that these player, which is George Elo Kabi Wandala, <laughs> have the point? highest BMI and uh, is playing in the Wolfram. Wanda is the name of part of the Yeah. And um, yeah, by using this uh, tidy words, we can extract some very interesting players from the data set. And uh, these are the player with the lowest BMI. Do you ever know what is Simon Pin? No. And we can actually uh, integrate uh, all these five tasks uh, into the GG one. For example, we can uh, we want to plot the BMI of the players and their stamina, with the color being the position. We can um, first filter out all the goalkeepers, and then. Uh, Calculate the BMI of all the, all the players using the mutate, and then filter out uh, the outliers, and then select the row that we need to do the plotting, and then pipe that data set into ggplot to, to do the plotting. So if I run all these, I should get a graph like this. And obviously, you can see that there is actually no relationship. <laughs> or you can say it's difficult to see the relationship. So, the fifth task is called summarize. So, uh, for example, you want to calculate the uh, mean values of the seminars of all the players, and also this SD, you can use summarize. And doing something like that, we calculate the mean and the SD of all the players. And um, you can also do the summaries using group by. Group by meaning we divide the data into five certain variables and then do the calculation. For example, this one. So we calculate the mean and the uh, and the median stamina for each group of uh, position, for each position. And uh, remember, we have uh, outliers, so we only want to do the calculation for, for those with the stamina higher than zero. So, and uh, I want to show you the la one last one, which is this one. So. What I'm doing here is to uh, filter out all the uh, goalkeepers and, uh, and the outliers and then group by the league, meaning the uh, Bundesliga or Premier League and things like that, CSR, and then uh, calculate the sort accuracy uh, for each player in each league and then arrange it by their mean values. So, we can see that by using the tidy words, we can see that in average, the uh, La Liga, the players in the La Liga, have a higher accuracy in shooting the goal, but lowest in the Bundesliga. Okay, by using the tidy words, we can do some in, uh, uh, analysis like this. So, 
use the tidyverse to explore your data and to manipulate your data so that you can find story in a data set. And I want to show you the final one. The final one, the final lesson I learned from doing all this. Okay, and I still have a few minutes left. Do you mind? I, I, I over time a little bit. Five minutes. Most. So, the final one. Meaning you need to give something that the reader can play with it. <laughs> Remember this one? Remember this comment? It's uh, Ovid. He can predict the future. He said that, that my first piece didn't have any interaction. And, um, and now, I tell you the interactive is actually very important. And um, in the early days, okay, this is probably the first interactive that I made, but it's not a lot of data journalism kind of stories, but it's before that. Uh, and I try, again, I try to do a meta analysis of all the posts about, uh, the, uh, about the political reform package in 2015, actually. If you remember, it's, there, there is a slogan called Dodgy Sing, Pocket It First. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, try to disprove the government claim that there's a majority of the Hong Kong people support Pocket It First. And uh, using the meta-analysis, I can find that, okay, there's actually no evidence to support there is a Relation. There, there, there is a majority support uh, for the for the for the package, and um, at that time, I need to make uh, this interactive stories, interactive graph. At that time, it's very painful because I need to use these three. Yeah, and uh, and I am not so good in JavaScript up to this point, and um, but now. I, I know there is some way that I don't need to use the, need to use JavaScript. I don't need to write raw JavaScript to, to do these kind of interactive. For example, this one I use timeline.js, say timeline.js to create a timeline like this, which is uh, showing the top 50 memes in, on Facebook. And I don't need to code anything. It's just tell me to import a CSV and then give me an interactive like this, which is you can play with it, and uh, you, there's a link to that, and then you can click on those memes and things like that. And uh, also, this one is is a workout of the keywords of the localists from their Facebook page. You can see that they. Uh, they need your money. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, we can use Google Fusion Table uh, to create a, a map like this. Again, this kind of uh, interactive, I don't need to code anything. It's just basically feeding the data and Google do the rest. So, Google Fusion Table is very useful. And, um, but sometimes there's no available tools that you can use. Uh, and suppose that you only know how to use R and uh, you want to create uh, some interactive. So right now it's very easy because we have Portly. So you don't need to write any the, D3 anymore. Um, for example, I have a data set like this one. 
which is called a B names. Oh, so it's a baby names uh, from the US and uh, the popularity of, uh, of each baby names and uh, separated by the gender. So, and suppose I want to know the popularity of the, uh, of the initial letters of each names. So I can use tidyverse to uh, extract the substrain of all the names, the first letter, the first character, and then group by year, sex, and the first character, and then calculate the uh, popularity. So after I doing that, it should give me a graph like this. So again, it's the inch, it's the find the news from this graph segment again. Okay, we have a graph like this. Unfortunately, again, the boys are represented as red. And um, what you can find from these graphs? Boys use James or J. Yeah, there is a very big change in J. And what else? Okay, there, 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 there are some names that uh, have a consistent uh, downward inference. For example, like uh, F. And uh, what else? W. But uh, for some initials, for the first letter, there is uh, the, the, the pattern of uh, resurgence. Meaning there is an increase again. For example, A. H. A. And A. And then also E. So. And I can tell you, in here, there's a very sharp increase here, right, here for the uh, girls. And I can tell you this point in time is in the light. Why there is an increase in the popularity of the English name for girls started with H? Theory. <laughs> and I can tell you this mainly because of Hillary. Yes. So, because by that time it's the Clinton administration in the in, in US, and uh, Hillary got a lot of spotlight. And that name becomes popular again. People try to use their name for their babies. And uh, there's a first increase, and then there's another increase because every every election, Hillary is a potential candidate. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there's a bump in the popularity of the name H, and also this one, E. This one is tricky. And uh, as you can see, again, the increase is mostly in girls. And uh, I can tell you it's mainly contributed by the name Emma. So, Emma whatever, <laughs> you can guess. Emma Stone or Emma Watson. So, but uh, this is a graph that you cannot play with, right? It just show you the graphs, and you cannot play with it. Okay, it's just a graph. 
But now we have the properly. So we can just create a graph using ggplot and then use ggplot to convert these graphs into something like this. It's the same graphs, but it's online, it's on your browser, and you can somehow interact with it by putting the cursor in it and it will give you the information about the graphs or about the particular data point. So there is no excuse for you not to do any interaction anymore. <laughs> so this, okay, this is the uh, final conclusion of my talk, which is uh, the seventh lesson that I've learned during my two years uh, two years of being a data journalist, as, as a dental data journalist. And uh, this is the end of my talk, so good luck and goodbye. <laughs>